Now is not a good time to buy NVIDIA stock. Stick around if you want to know why. For this analysis, I'm using the discounted future free cash flow model. I love this model because it's very easy to understand. It's very intuitive. Free cash flow is the money that a company uses to pay off its debt, invest in future growth, pay dividends, or perform share buybacks. Basically, the free cash flow is my investment return. I don't care about the earnings per share as much as I care about the free cash flow per share. I want to know how much free cash flow a company is generating right now and how much they're expected to grow that free cash flow in the future. For NVIDIA's current free cash flow, I was able to find that in their financial statements. And for their future expected free cash flow growth, I went to the analysts. The analysts project NVIDIA's future revenue. So I, I couldn't find anywhere where they try to predict their free cash flow directly, but I can use two parts. I can look at their revenue projections and I can look at their past free cash flow margin. This is the percent of revenue that a company is able to uh, create free cash flow. One thing that really stands out to me on the projections is actually going from 2022 to 2023, their revenue increased by 125%, which is much more than normal. That's something I wanna look at a little bit more in the future. And then going from 2023 to 2024, they're maintaining that huge growth, 100% revenue growth is what the analysts imagine. And then they're predicting the revenue falls off a little bit and the number of analysts goes down as well. I won't go over every detail of the spreadsheet here. I've already made a full length video doing just that. I'll put a link right here in the corner if you wanna check that out. Also, if you wanna just download my spreadsheet and use it for free, I'll have a link in the description below. Here is my Excel spreadsheet where I perform the discounted future free cash flow analysis. I use three different types of projections. First, I use past performance to predict future performance. I'll use the annual increase in free cash flow averaged over that past five year period. I'll use that same increase over the next five years. However, in this case, using past performance isn't as relevant for Nvidia because they've just had a huge spike in their revenue. So something big has changed in the company and past performance isn't gonna be indicative of future performance. However, I will still use the past free cash flow margin or the average free cash flow margin over the previous five years. And I will couple that with the analyst projections. In this case, I will couple the revenue predictions that the analysts provide, and I will use the average free cash flow margin over the previous five years. And that way you can use the revenue multiplied by the margin, and that'll give me an indirect analyst prediction for free cash flow. The third projection that I do is just an exploratory projection. I will play with the numbers. I'll change the free cash flow margin. I'll change the revenue increase and kind of see, you know, how different futures would play out if Nvidia is able to beat the projections, if they lose to the projections, just kind of get an idea for what's possible. There are just three assumptions that are built into this projection model. The first being the projected future cash flow, which is a big assumption. You know, nobody can predict the future, but you know, we do the best that we can. The second is the perpetual growth rate. This is basically inflation. What is the natural growth that the economy is gonna have over time? For this, I use 3%. This is something that you can just Google and plug into your spreadsheet. And then finally, the discount rate. The discount rate is also known as the cost of equity, and it represents the investment return that a company must offer its investors to compensate for the risk. And this model considers the inherent risk of investing in that company compared to a risk-free investment and the market's overall risk. This is another number that I can look up and plug in. Now using our three projections, the analyst future revenue projections are 3% perpetual growth of the economy and a roughly 10% discount rate for NVIDIA. The calculated fair value is just $39, while the current price is $124. So according to this model, NVIDIA is grossly overpriced. But now let me tweak a few of the assumptions and see how that changes the model's prediction. The first one I wanna change is the free cash flow margin. So remember, I coupled the analyst predictions with revenue with the past performance of free cash flow margin. So if Nvidia is able to increase their free cash flow instead of it just being a flat average going into the future, let's see how it affects their fair value. If Nvidia's free cash flow margin 
is able to increase by 5% every year, which kind of brings it more in line with the trend of the past performance, then their fair value only increases to $45 per share. If I up their margin even more, increasing 10% per year, that results in an ending free cash flow margin of above 75%. That's probably unobtainable. And the resulting fair value is now just $52. So clearly, no amount of changing the margin is going to bring the fair value up to today's current value. So we have to tweak the revenue. If I bring the free cash flow margin growth back down to 5% increase per year, which makes it look similar to the trend of the past five years, and then I increase the revenue shown on this graph by 40% year over year, starting after the 2024 predictions. I still wanna use the 2024 analyst revenue predictions because it's not very far out. I have pretty high confidence that they're gonna get pretty close with that revenue prediction. But then going into the future, you can see the yellow line goes way above the red line. That's the revenue growth. So assuming increased revenue growth and increased free cash flow growth, the fair value for NVIDIA is now $120 which is a, just a slight discount to today's share price, which is $124. So what this means to me is for NVIDIA to be priced correctly right now, they have to succeed in having pretty insane free cash flow margin growth, and they have to far outpace the analyst predictions for revenue growth. So the next thing I look at is what kind of hurdles could they come up to in the future? What kind of problems might they have with their current revenue streams? And this is gonna require a little bit more due diligence. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. To find this information, I went to NVIDIA's most recent annual report and looked at their streams of revenue. And of course, the one that jumps out at me immediately is data centers. In 2023, only 15 billion, only 15 billion. But now as of January, 2024, it's grown to $47.5 billion in revenue. This alone, this stream of revenue from data centers makes up 78% of their total revenue. Other streams of revenue include gaming, which they sell graphics cards for consoles and computers. They also have a professional visualization stream of revenue where they are in 3D design, content creation, virtual world simulation, and then finally automotive where they're gonna start competing with Tesla for autonomous driving. Clearly revenue from data centers is their most important stream of income. So this is the one that I wanna look at to see, you know, what are the potential problems that could happen? So my next question is who are their biggest customers? From this article, says NVIDIA's most important clients for its graphics processing units are the big cloud providers, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. These make up mid 40%, so more than 40% of their data center revenue in the quarter of April. That article didn't include Meta for whatever reason, but clearly Meta is also a huge buyer of NVIDIA chips. This article from January of 2024 is just headlined, Mark Zuckerberg indicates Meta is spending billions of dollars on NVIDIA AI chips. In my mind, this is a big risk for NVIDIA. They have a incredibly concentrated customer base in their most important sector. There's just four customers that if any one of those four fall victim to, you know, one of NVIDIA's competitors, then NVIDIA would be losing a huge stream of revenue. And remember, we saw whenever we looked at the discounted future free cash flow model, if NVIDIA slows down at all on their revenue, then their current share price is not going to be worth it. In fact, they have to far exceed analyst predictions. So they cannot afford to lose any part of their biggest stream of income which means they cannot afford to lose any of their biggest customers. So next step, let's go to NVIDIA's annual report and see what they say about competition in their business risk section. We receive a significant amount of our revenue from a limited number of partners and distributors. And we have a concentration of sales to customers who purchase directly or indirectly from us. Sales to customer A represented 13% of total revenue for the fiscal year of 2024. So one customer, 13% of their total revenue, not just their data center revenue, their total revenue. Furthermore, it says many of our customers often do not purchase directly from us, 
but through multiple companies. One indirect customer, which primarily purchases our products through system integrators and distributors, including through customer A, is estimated to have represented 19% of total revenue in the year 2024. Clearly, NVIDIA has a lot of risk around just having a few core customers. So my next question that follows, how likely are they to lose one of these four huge customers to their competition? Let's see what NVIDIA's competition risk section has to say. For GPUs and custom chips, NVIDIA lists AMD, Intel, and Huawei. Under cloud services, they list Alibaba, Google, Amazon, Microsoft. Three of their largest customers are also three of their biggest competitors. That is horrible because if they're able to make something just comparable, they're gonna opt to use their own chips and they're gonna be able to customize their own chips to suit their needs a little bit better than what NVIDIA will be able to do. So this is a major red flag for me. Also strange that once again, they don't list Meta as a customer or a competitor because if I go to Meta's website, it says they're introducing their next generation infrastructure for AI. They're coming out with their own custom chip as well. So I would say all four of NVIDIA's biggest customers are also four of their biggest competition. The current share price of NVIDIA only makes sense if they continue to grow their revenue and that growth continues to accelerate going forward, which goes against what the analysts think will happen. So this is one major risk. Second, all of their biggest customers are their biggest competition. This is the second major risk. And third, they get most of their chips from Taiwan. And as we know, we've been hearing about this for years. China might invade Taiwan. They've been saying they're going to do it, but they've never done it. Well, if that happens, then NVIDIA would lose a huge percentage of their manufacturing. So if any of these three things happen, I do not think it's possible for NVIDIA to maintain the revenue growth and free cash flow margin growth that would be required for their share price today to make sense. There are just too many things that can go wrong with NVIDIA. And I think the discounted future free cash flow model does a really good job of showing just the type of performance that they're gonna have for their current share price to make sense. Next, you probably want your own handy spreadsheet for modeling discounted future free cash flow. Check out my video right here on building your own that automatically populates the past financials and the future analyst projections, which makes it a lot easier. Check it out. Catch you on the flip side.